Warning, the Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number, SCP-184. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-184 is not to be contained in any structure. SCP-184 is to be attached to a high-power electromagnet at all times. Should the electromagnet fail, agents are to report to SCP-184's containment area and prevent access to all unauthorized personnel until the electromagnet is restored to power. The containment area for SCP-184 is currently configured to resemble a park, with SCP-184 and its containment magnet disguised as statuary. Any and all visitors are to be monitored. Any structures affected by SCP-184 are to be demolished after review by Final demolition approval or inclusion into SCP will also be determined by this body. No investigation is to be done into affected structures without approval and a rescue team on standby. Description SCP-184 is a small, smooth metallic object, 4 inches tall, 4 inches wide, in the shape of a dodecahedron. Each face of the figure has a circular hole in the center, and a small sphere is attached at each vertex. SCP-184 is made of an unknown but highly magnetic alloy as hard as brass. When inside an enclosed structure, SCP-184 expands the structure's inner dimensions without altering its outer dimensions. SCP-184 will increase the inner dimensions of any enclosed structure by several hundred meters each day, beginning one hour after entry into the structure. Initially, SCP-184 only extends the walls out, causing room to become much larger without adjusting the height of the room. This expansion continues until the original dimensions of the room have been tripled. At this point, SCP-184 starts creating wholly new rooms. SCP-184 is apparently able to copy items from inside the structure, creating furnished rooms consistent with the rest of the structure. After a period of time, however, the expansion process appears to break down. For example, Items will be made from inappropriate materials. Glass books, a wooden microwave. Rooms will be oddly shaped. Doors will be open on the blank walls, and hallways will be tiny or twist back around in long mazes. The new inside structures continue to be more and more odd while the outside remains unchanged. This behavior is most dramatically illustrated in homes. However, it has been observed in other instances, including a cardboard box. The changes do not go away with the removal of SCP-184, but no additional structures are created. Addendum 184-1 Notes from Dr. P I don't think I need to stress the fact that this thing can never be allowed into Site-19. We may need to look into different containment at some point, but for the time being, we will keep it in the open, immovable, and hidden. Addendum 184-2 Locations of Interest it is currently hypothesized that SCP-184, or an anomaly with a similar effect, may be responsible for the creation of locations of interest such as Backdoor Soho and Jagutu Cellar. Investigations in SCP-184's potential origin for these species is ongoing. Addendum 184-38RB Notes on Recovery SCP-184 was recovered in the Kowloon Walled City in June of Reports of the city's bizarre and explosive growth attracted operatives. We we'll soon learned of SCP-184 held in possession of After several police crackdowns, Mobile Task Force Zeta-9 was dispatched and recovered SCP-184 with minimal losses. The final effect of exposure to SCP-184 in both the city and inhabitants may never fully be understood due to the reckless actions of local law enforcement, which destroyed several affected sections of the city before operatives could take action to prevent it. Interviews with residents yielded minimal information with the communal Wall of Silence being major response. A few documents indicated that SCP-184 could be brought into a home and allowed to affect the dwelling for 50 pounds sterling per half hour. These documents were unconfirmed by residents. Addendum 184-38RB-S Additional Documentation Personal Log of Gordon Richards Member of Mobile Task Force Zeta-9, The Mole Rats. Date, June 3rd, 19... Dispatched to the Kowloon Walled City, 
to recover an object and document anything affected by it. I have never seen such a horrible place. The filth is everywhere. Whole walls and even structures made of garbage. If you crack your suit for even a second, you get flooded by the smell of smoke, cooking, and sweat. Machine oil and excrement. Henry fell into a pit used as a sewer on the ground level after breaking through a trash walkway. It was fine. The suit was just filthy. But he threw up and had to be removed. I'm not sure if he's going to work out. Everyone here avoids us like the plague, or darts out to throw trash or insults. They are a tribe, and a territorial one at that. The sheer crush of humanity is intimidating, and I'm glad I have the suit between me and them. The object is supposed to be somewhere in the core of this mass, but getting there is going to be tricky. Date. June 4th, 19... Local law enforcement, led by agents, did a bunch of raids last night. Cleared out people from some of the areas we need to go into. But there are so many people, it's hard to notice any difference. Yesterday's recon helped uncover a couple of homes affected by this thing. They don't look like much. The same squalid homes as everywhere else. But they are too big inside. It's an odd feeling. Standing with your hand on the wall, and knowing that by all rights, you should be six feet outside the structure, in midair. Henry's better today, but seems really jumpy. Lev took him aside and talked to him last night, and I hope it's helped. I'm getting worried about him. Caught him muttering to himself over the radio today. Told him to knock it off, but didn't report it. Maybe I should've. I think I'm going to ask for him to be put on a different unit after this. Deep recon this evening. We're splitting up and trying to hunt down where they're storing this thing. Lev and I pulled a short stick and have to hike around the sewer system. Honestly, it can't be any worse than topside. At least I won't have to keep seeing the blank, empty faces of these people. Date. June 6, 19- Henry is dead. We didn't get back until early this morning. We'd been off radio for several hours because of all the interference. It seems areas affected by this thing screw with radio waves pretty bad. The sewer was a nightmare, but no sign of alteration by the item. When we came back up, Paul gave me the news. Henry and Paul were exploring near the center of the city when they got attacked. A mob of people swarmed them and dragged Henry off. Paul was hurt and his suit was badly damaged, and he had to leave for medical attention. Henry was screaming over the radio for a while, before it cut off. Paul and a couple other mole rats charged in with some agents to recover Henry, but after a few minutes, Henry came back on the radio. His receiver was broken, but he could still broadcast. One of the agents was recording, and he played it back to Lev and I, to see if it made any sense to us. It didn't. He was rambling, and it sounded like he was hurt. I kept talking about the endless heart of the city, the hell of glass, just crazy stuff. Paul and the rescue team kept trying to find him, but suddenly his radio cut out again. Henry came tearing down one of those tiny halls, helmet off and screaming like a madman. He ran right by Paul and smashed an agent into the wall on his way by. He slammed into a dead end and just exploded through it, right out of the building. He fell six stories onto some metal junk took an hour to get his body untangled. We're done screwing around here. Agent Parks, Lev, and me are rounding up what amounts to the city elders. We're getting to the damn bottom of this. Date. June 7th, 19th. Interrogation went well. Agent Parks asked the questions. We provide what he called negative consequence for non-cooperation. The first guy, some triad punk, didn't want to talk. Two broken legs later, and he was a lot more open. Said the thing was called the Builder, and nobody knew when it first came to the city. He never had anything to do with it, just helped stand guard outside rooms where it was working. He said that was all he knew, and that we had to talk to one of the elders, 
Long Gwen if we wanted it. He apologized for Henry's death, so it was just the way of things. I broke his jaw in three places. Long Gwyn may be the oldest looking man I've ever seen, and with a will like iron. He just took everything we dished out, and didn't say a word. Park said that the next stop was his wife and grandkids, and that got him talking. Told us it was kept in one of the oldest parts of the city, some old temple. It had grown and made wonderful things, but only the worthy could look upon it and not be overwhelmed by it. He said Henry was shown the wonders, in hopes that he would be able to convince us not to take the builder, but that he was not worthy and was broken. So, we made him show us where they kept it. Long Wind said it wouldn't do any good, it was buried too deep. They moved it deep inside when they first caught wind of the agents. He said we'd never get it back. We're doing deep work tomorrow, and we're not coming out without it. Date. June 10th, 1990. Been out for a while. This place is amazing. At first, it was just a temple that was too big inside. Neat, but nothing new. Then we went in deeper. Whole rooms, altars, everything. Recreated and rearranged by this thing. It's like someone built 12 whole temples inside this one tiny structure. Agent Park set up a recall point in the main hall with some other agents to make sure no one sneaks up on us. We suited up and went to work. It started getting odd after hour six. Lots of hallways, not as many rooms. Then, 83 rooms all connected by those sliding doors, each with a tiny boot in the center of the floor and nothing else. Lev grabbed a few for samples. We knew things were getting odd when we came to a perfect reproduction of the first altar room, but appearing to be made of one solid mass of wood. The thing was beautiful and totally seamless, and not a single tool mark on anything. Paul found some documents and we scanned them back to Parks. He said they were about the object. Apparently, they're calling it SCP-184 now. Parks said it talks about how they moved 184 deeper each time it made a new area. They thought it was some gift from God or something. Used it to expand the rooms. If people would donate to the temple, or at least to the gangs that controlled it at the time. I've never been in a place like this. It's getting harder to maneuver. The halls are starting to get strange. They go up at funny angles. And the last few rooms have been tiny. By last count, we should be 20 feet above the roof of this whole city by now. Um, date, June 12th, 19th. I'm getting sick of this place. Came into a branch yesterday, had to split the team. I drew the up hallway and set out. Not sure how long I've been climbing. The halls aren't regular anymore. They wave in and out like a frozen earthquake. Everything seems to be made of stone here. Managed to squeeze into a side room to catch my breath. Once I looked around, I saw everything was made of jade. It was all colored right, and had the right texture. But it was jade. Bed, chairs, table, books, everything. I sat on the bed for two hours and didn't think. I got up and smashed the jade lamp that was probably worth more than my life, and left. I'm not feeling well. I feel really disconnected here, like an astronaut or something. It's not like other areas I've been in. Never felt so... alone. I'm fine. I know that. It's Henry dying. This whole rotten city outside. And me being alone and able to think too much. Rats are tested for mental stability, and I passed with flying colors. It's just my nerves. I'm sitting on a chair made of thousands of tiny dragon statues, riding on a table made of super dense paper. And I am fine. Date. June... I don't know. I don't know. I've been out too long. Food low. 
Waterlow. Not out yet, but getting there. Hearing things. Keep thinking I hear voices. Been climbing for days. Saw a light today. At the end of the side hall, bright yellow light. I climbed into the hall and ran, smashed through the door. It was a room. Millions of candles, all lit. But just another room. I pulled off my helmet, smashed the candles with it, broke my lenses, next seal, radio. Didn't care. Sat and cried for hours. Dropped a pick down shaft today. Never heard it hit bottom. Almost jumped to get it, but stopped. Gotta find this thing. Going to smash it to bits. Stomp it. Crush it. Date. June? Food out. Suit can't make any more water. Saw a hall with 10,000 doors. Ran down it, smashed a bunch, then kept climbing. Lost my boots. Floor looks like carpet, made of super sharp stone. Cut suit to ribbons, feet too. Blood all over the shaft. Hope it appreciates it. Going to crush this thing. Feel it shatter in my hand. Hate this place. Keep hearing Henry. Keep telling him he's dead. Won't we'll listen. Date? No idea. Top of shaft. Hall to forever. Lights everywhere. Going to kill the heart. Date? Uh, hell is heaven. Heaven is hell. Life is wonderful. Gordon Richards went missing during the recovery of SCP-184, presumed KIA. SCP-184 recovered by Team Zeta-9. Journal recovered and rubble left from destruction of SCP-184 affected temple.